Now uh, second video. So if you take a deep breath, a meditative ah, let the stress of our <laughs> challenges leave. Be in the present moment. And we're gonna do our prayer. May the wisdom of the all-compassionate one so shine within our hearts and minds this day that we may be enlightened in our acts, thoughts and deeds. So shall we learn to be true, good and happy and attain the spiritual peace. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya. <coughs> okay, welcome back. Uh, let's continue. So if you have your uh, PDF to one side, we'll be on page page five is what we'll be referring to. Okay. So we have been doing fulfilling role one's role in society. And <clears throat> we had the uh, job here. I'd like to invite four students, one for each category. That's the categories of physical, intellectual, social, and emotional, to share their thoughts and observations about changes. So this is going to be your performance task. So if you need to, refer to the end of the last video to uh, catch that. Now then. I'd like to ask you to answer the following table in fulfilling one's role in the society. So here we have a different task. So the last one is just about this, is four students. So one student, talk about your physical um, changes. Another one, talk about your intellectual changes. Another one about your social changes another one about your emotional changes. Good, that's your task. So just what, that's your performance task. I'd like you to do that and then submit that on a PM. Okay, you can pause the video here while you do that. Okay, and right at the top that that's what that is as well. Next, I'd like you to answer the, the table in fulfilling one's role in, soci in the society. So you'll see this table at the bottom of page five, or you can use this screenshot, which it might be better definition. So you have your status and your roles. So if you actually look um, at the end of the last video or on page five of your PDF, You'll see under the section fulfilling one's role in the society, you will hear, uh, you'll see the word status in there several times. If you look down line by line, and you'll see the word role during, in that text as well. And that, will ex that explains about this idea that. As a person, you have many status in your family. You might be the youngest one, the youngest sibling. And in the school, you might be a senior club official. Yeah? And you also might have another, another status as a citizen. Clear? So then, for each of those, as a youngest sibling, you have a role. Yeah, towards your elder siblings, towards your parents, and another one in the, as a club uh, senior official, you have a role to play, right? So there's behaviours, there's actions, there's responsibilities, there's duties, and then your status uh, as a citizen, you have many roles and many obligations, duties, and responsibilities. Okay, so you put those. Answers in and submit. <clears throat> okay, pause that while you do that. Let's move on. 
So let's read page six together, responding positively to changes in one's body and appearance. When you're ready. So what, so we've got a question here to answer and submit. What are the changes that you have experienced as an adolescent so far? Perhaps you have already noticed that the biggest changes were physical ones. Mm -hmm. So what are the changes that you have experienced as an adolescent so far? It doesn't only have to be the physical ones, it can be other ones as well that we mentioned, intellectual, emotional and sociological, social. You might have noticed too that some of your friends and classmates have grown quickly while others have done so slowly. This is perfectly all right, since by the time everyone has reached late adolescence, most of the slow growers will have caught up. Close observation will tell you that the body shape between boys and girls differ during the growth spurt. It's a growth uh, time, a quick time quick time, a time of growing very quickly. Girls become more curvy, narrower at the waist, broader at the hips and shoulders. While the boys become broader at the shoulders and more muscular, also the voices of young men deepen and they start to grow facial and bodily hair. However, Remember that the physical growth spurt has nothing to do with the maturity of a person. Medi many adolescents who look physically mature may still think and act like children. As your body undergoes change, it is very important that you take good care of it by eating a nutritious and balanced diet so that you can attain your full height and strength. In adolescence, you will begin to look the way you are going to look as an adult. Some changes are permanent, as dictated by the genes of your parents, while some are only temporary. Pimples or acne can be bothersome. But this is just temporary and all part of growing up. Just like everyone else, you cannot do much about your physical appearance. <clears throat> However, you can do something about how you think and approach life. It is okay to feel a little awkward during the period of adolescence. All the changes happening of this stage may be overwhelming to a young person, but remember that everyone goes through it. Perhaps you have noticed too that you are sometimes moody, irritable and angry one minute and then feeling pleasant and excited a short time later. Sometimes you feel so happy you're floating on air. At other times you're so miserable you want to hide from the world. <clears throat> Keep in mind that these mood swings happen to most adolescents. The important thing is that while you are an adolescent, you learn to manage your emotions and not let them make you do things that you will regret later. Remember, these are trying times, but an exciting time to grow, learn and prepare for your future. Cultivating the ability to make careful decisions. So a question for you to answer and submit. What are values and how are they important in this critical juncture in your life as an adolescent. 
According to Shalom H. Schwarz in Basic Human Values, an overview. Values refer to what is important to us in our lives, which can be security, independence, wisdom, success, kindness, pleasure, and others. Also, he stressed that each of us holds numerous values with varying degrees of importance. Schwartz also explains that values are desirable, trans-situational goals, so that means you can take those values from situation to situation to situation, varying in importance, which serve as guiding principles in people's lives. So that's, I want to just slow that down, break it down a bit. Schwartz also explains that values are, it's, it's saying values are desirable goals which serve as guiding principles in people's lives. Eh? He just put these extra two bits in, trans-situational goals and they vary in importance. He's kind of added two more sentences in there anyway. Okay, the values are desirable goals which, which serve as guiding principles in people's lives. Like, I desire to be a good person. That can be your desirable goal. And as you go from the shops, and as you go to the mall, as you go to school, and as you go to home, that principle uh, is carried across those different situations and it serves as a guiding thing, a guiding principle. Yeah, got that? And they vary in importance. Being good might be uh, extremely important and uh, being a good cook might, not, might be a bit lower down the, the, the ladder of importance or being good at a, another language might be low or high. So it depends on person. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. The key concept for values is that they serve as guiding principles in our life. Let us stop for a while and reflect upon this special period in your life. Adolescence can be described as Sturm and Drang. That's German for a time of storm and stress. With the numerous changes that are happening in your life right now, you can say that such description is true. I just want to point out that for some people there is more storminess and more stress than with other people. For some people it's not storm, it's stormy and stressful, and for some people it is. Very, and that depends on many conditions <clears throat> as well, just to make that point. <clears throat> when you enter the adolescent phase, you have noticed that significant changes have been happening in your body or physical appearance. Also, your interaction with other people has become more def definite and intentional. I think that should be interactions. Let's bring the text. <clears throat> yeah, significant changes. So you're having your interaction. Oh, yeah. They didn't put S on yet, but I think it should be also your interactions with other people have become more definite and intentional. <clears throat> now your parent or guardian, as well as the adults in the society, are expecting you not only to follow the rules, but also to fulfill dutifully and consistently your obligations and responsibilities. Furthermore, there is now a set of expectations on how you should behave.
uh, the words that you use or even how you carry yourself. So now we're over on to page seven. <clears throat> carry yourself means how you behave. You know, how you walk, how you talk, how you dress, how you go about uh, in society. That's called carrying yourself. Page seven. Lastly, you are given more freedom with an understanding that you will be, you will choose the appropriate action and will be responsible for the consequences of your decisions. <clears throat> Robert J. Havighurst shed light on the turmoils and challenges of adolescence through the developmental tasks theory. So as you can expect, turmoils is like storms. It gives the idea of a kind of uh, crisis or storm. <clears throat> Havikhurst asserts that development is continuous throughout the entire lifespan occurring in stages where an individual moves from one stage to the next by means of successful resolution of problems or performance of developmental tasks. That's a long sentence, all right? So maybe, I think, but I think it was okay to understand, was it? Development is continuous throughout the entire lifespan. When you're 25 years old, you're still working things out. You're still learning new things. When you're 30 years old, new things again. When you're 45 years old, new stuff to learn, new things to deal with. When you're 60, new things. Okay, so it's always going on. You have to deal with uh, marriage, you have to deal with aging, you have to deal with sickness, you have to deal with social responsibilities. Yeah, that's always at work. And of course, when you're five years old, when you're 10 years old, when you're 15 years old, when you're 20 years old. So, an, and an individual moves from one stage to the next by successful resolution of problems uh, or, the, or the performance of developmental tasks. So you might have to learn how to speak in public, for example. <clears throat> or manage anger, something like that. He adds that developmental tasks at each stage are influenced by a person's biology, their physiological maturation, and genetic makeup. Developmental tasks are influenced by his or her psychology, their personal values and goals as well as his social, sociology, the specific culture to which the individual belongs. Okay. Hence, in order for a young person like you to develop from adolescence to early adulthood, you need to, one, establish emotional independence from parents, to equip yourself with skills needed for productive occupation. Three, achieve a gender-based social role. And four, establish mature relationships with peers of both sexes, both genders. So one, establish emotional independence from parents. You're not depending on them. Yeah, for your feelings to equip your skills yourself with skills needed for a productive occupation a job three achieve a gender-based social role so you're a husband you're a wife you are, have friends you're a member of a club you, you have activities that you do out in society and four establish mature relationships with Peers of both genders. You have good male and good female friends. We're good.
Looking at your current situation in life with all the changes and expectations, answering this question, <clears throat> what are the values that I hold dear and how do they guide my life becomes all the more significant. So I didn't put a green box there, but it should have one. Okay, so what are the values that I hold dear and how do they guide my life? Valuing a virtue. Self-worth. So in the halfway down, page seven. Here's a question for you. How do you see yourself in, in the meaning? That, could, that question could mean a lot of different things, but in this case it means, do you think you are worth a lot? <laughs> it's so easy to say, it's all about 150 pesos. No, it's not like that. How, do you think you are worth a lot? Are you valuable? Are you carrying good skills that you can give that are... You know, uh, going to benefit other people, or are you a, a negative asset, or are you a positive asset? All those kind of questions. So you give your answer. Do you think you are worth a lot? Self worth primarily consists of respect for oneself or a va valuable, favorable opinion of oneself. <clears throat> So answer and submit. It is the sense of one's own value or worth as a person. Young children know their self-worth and believe that they are important and valuable as persons. That's a little bit of a general statement. I'm quite sure there are young children who have... Uh, low self-esteem as well, but uh, he makes a statement, so I, I'm just reading. Unfortunately, ah, oh, here we go. So it's basically saying that as a young child, mostly you will see they have a, a joyful, friendly, big sense of happiness about being, generally speaking, most of the time, not all of the time. Then... Unfortunately, as time goes by, their natural sense of self-worth is affected by the comments, expectations and attitudes of other people. Sometimes they even put themselves down or belittle their worth when they compare their lives with the lives of the rich and popular people. All human beings have dignity and are called to have a positive self-worth. <clears throat> Our self-worth then should not be based on wealth or fame, but instead be anchored on the belief that we are all capable of doing our best with our talents that we can contribute to the society. All human beings have dignity and are called to have a positive self-worth. Our self-worth then should not be based on wealth or fame, but instead be anchored on the belief that we are capable of doing our best with our talents, that we can contribute to the society and that we deserve to live a purposeful life. We live in a culture where wealth and social importance commonly dictate the value of a person. However, self-worth goes beyond such limiting notions. Go through the questions below on the next slide and rediscover your self-worth. Here's your performance task. Pair up with a classmate and discuss your answers. So I want you to do that by private message. 
here's the, here are the four questions. One, what are my talents? Two, what are my strengths? Three, what are my skills? And four, what makes me feel fulfilled? Okay, there's your performance task and pair up with a classmate and discuss your answers. So show, you can show each other your answers that you put, you can screenshot and then send that <coughs> to them as well, as well as to me. And if you can give some kind of evidence of doing that so that when you've shared that to your classmate, screenshot the, the PM box and send that to me so that I can see that you've done your performance task. Okay, so I want to see evidence of you having done that. And I'm very interested to see what are your talents. I'd like to know. And what do you see that your strengths are? And what are your skills? And also, very importantly, what makes me feel fulfilled? Good, you got that? Go ahead and I pause this and I'll move on. <clears throat> so over the page to page eight, value yourself regardless of your financial status or status or popularity. So you might be poor and you might be unpopular, but you yourself know that you're good and valuable. Remember, you are not just somebody. You are a unique valuable and wonderful being who matters. Good. We've got the picture there of one young boy. I saw people doing this in Palawan where they had a, a blackboard and they were teaching their fellow children. And passing a ball to each other, so we got basketball in there, and one child reading to the others Quentong stories, or Bugtong Bugtong, and all the children listening. Lovely. So, moving on. <clears throat> the featured virtue here is self-worth. So this is not written in the book, by the way. This is, I just want you to listen. Self-worth. Self-worth consists of respect for oneself or a favorable, favorable opinion of oneself. And we're going to take a pause here. You can skip over this if you're just on a flow and you're carrying on working because sometimes this depends on uh, when I was making the slides that I had to go off and do something. But... Uh, those who need to stop at this point, uh, you can do the closing prayer. I'll say it anyway, and I will continue moving on on this video. Reverently do we pray to thee, the holy and perfect one. We earnestly resolve to understand thy teaching and to daily tread thy path. So shall, like thee, we may attain the peace of Nirvana. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya. And similarly, we're going to have an opening prayer. <clears throat> May the wisdom of the all-compassionate one so shine within our hearts and minds this day that we may be enlightened in our acts, thoughts and deeds, and so shall we learn to be true, good and happy, and attain the spiritual peace. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya. And trivia. So the trivia on the page 8, halfway down. The word adolescent comes from the Latin adolescentem, which means growing, near maturity, or youthful. So adolescence is really a process to maturity. And we're on to uplifting realizations. And a little comment here and a question for you, so you can actually answer this one, even though it doesn't have a green box. Students, I'd like to ask you all, and individually, how can you enjoy the process of adolescence and persevere to full maturity? So you can pause and answer that. 
I'm looking for a variety of answers, but I would like to emphasize the following. Adolescents should have positive self-worth. <clears throat> Be patient, practice reflection, and listen to the advice of positive role models. So that means to say other answers are very acceptable and I would like a variety of them, but these are also strong ones to consider. We've got a performance task. Here it is. <clears throat> so we're not on to the reading yet. <clears throat> oh, yes, we are. This is going to be part of it. <clears throat> so the activity is going to be groups to read a poem out loud. All right, so groups is easier in a classroom, but it's not impossible on using Facebook Messenger, using the Messenger, so you can create a group, one of you do that, and then add those friends who you're going to group up together with. So uh, depending on um, numbers as well. So I see we've got 19 guys and we've got 13 girls, right? So let me see, that will be 32. So half of that would be 16 and half of that would be eight. So four groups of eight. I believe if I, my maths works. Four groups of eight. So what I could do, I mean, I could make the group, I suppose, is we could try doing it um, so it'll be one mixed group. <clears throat> We could try doing it like this, that the first group is Franz Gabriel Abian, one, Prince Alonso two, Jared um, Mogus, Moguis uh, three, uh, Jerick Aralano four, Kirsten Bersabal five, Chris Fernandez six, Rowan Guevara seven, and uh, Zichuan Liang eight. You try that way, and then the next group will be Jared Lloyd, one. I'm going to say 10. I'm going to say your number 10, because we're going to go down to 18, 10 to 18. So 10, Jared Lloyd, uh, sorry, 9, Jared Lloyd, 10, Ming Lin, 11, Miguel Melanas, 12, Josh Nevara, 13, Liam Pachanya, 14, Andrew Relano, 15, Josiah Ragun, uh, 16, Eric Unai. So actually that's where we pause. That's the second eight, not 19. <clears throat> so that's group two. And then group three, Matt Villarate, sorry, Villarate, uh, Yiduo Wang, two, three, Lanz Yang, four, Charissa Abraccia, five, Kasi Aguilon, six, Al Mario Maria, Maria Flor, or Maria Flor Al Mario, I think it is. So one, that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, Princess Bahian, and eight, Bane, Bane, Aubrey, Bane, Bane. And then the group, so you'll be group three. Group four, Joanna Escobar. Group four, Lorraine Ferres. Group four, Alexandria Lauren. Group four, Suzanne Lascuna, Group 4, Dana Pamat, Group 4, Jelian Quindoy, Group 4, Zayaline Toledo, Group 4, Ayla Wu. So I'm just going to repeat that very quickly. Group 1, Franz Abian, Group 1. Group 1, Prince Alonso, Group 1, Jared Amogwis, 
Group 1, Arala Jeric Aralano. Group 1, Carsten Bersabal. Group 1, Chris Fernandez. Group 1, Rowan Guevara. And Group 1, uh, Zishuan Liang. Group 1. Group 2. I'll make a note to make these groups, or maybe a messenger. I'll, I'll um, see about doing that. Group two, Jared Lloyd. Group two, Ming Lin. Group two, Miguel Milanes. Group two, Niavara Josh. Group two, Liam Pachania. Group two, Andrew Relano. Group two, Josiah Sagun. Group two, Eric Unai. Clear? Group three. Matt Velarte, Group 2, Yido Wang, Group 2, Lanz Yang, Group 2, Charissa Abraccia, Group 2, Cassidy Aguilon, Group 2, Maria Flor Almario, Group 2, Bahian, Princess Bahian, Group... I'm saying this wrong, forget that. <laughs> Let's rewind. Group 3, Matt Velarte, Group 3, Yido Wang, Group three, Yans Lang, Lanz Yang. Group three, Charissa Abraccia. Group three, Cassie Aguilon. Group three, Maria Flor Almario. Group three, Princess Bahian. Group three, Aubrey Bane Bane. Okay. Group four, Joanna Escobar. Group four, Lorraine Flores. Group four, Alexandria Lauren. Group four, Suzanne Lascuna. Group four, Dana Pamat. Group 4, Jelly and Kundoy. Group 4, Zilin Toledo. Group 4, Ayla Wu. <clears throat> okay. Um, we will divide the Desiderata poem on page 9 into four groups. And I'd like then to ask the groups to read their portion of the Desiderata. So we've started to do that. We'll see about making uh, desiderata poem groups for grade seven on on Messenger. <clears throat> That'll be a new adventure. We'll try doing that today. All of us have dignity and must always believe in our self-worth. This means that regardless of age, race, financial status, educational attainment and religious affiliation, we are called to respect and value our fellow men. Let us look closely at the poem Desiderata by Max Erfman and find some inspiration. Output. <coughs> Group 1, read out loud. Go placidly amidst the noise and haste and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others, even to the dull and the ignorant, they too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons, they are vexations to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain and bitter, for always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. That's the end of reading out for group one. Group, group two, read out loud. <clears throat> Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career. However humble, it is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for higher ideals, and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be yourself, especially do not feign affection. Feign means to pretend. Fake. Uh, so you can be reading these onto audio clips, onto the messenger. Eat all of you. you, know, you obviously, you can't. I don't think you can do it in unison. If you know a way to do it in unison, like actually all together on audio, uh, perhaps TikTok, the divided screen or something like that, then go ahead. 
if you know how to do it. If you don't, you can simply, on the group chat, deliver your audio, and I can check them by listening. Group three, read out loud. Neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all aridity, that means dryness of the weather. Again, neither be cynical means I don't believe in it. Neither be cynical about love. For in the face of all aridity, all dryness, there's no water. Yeah? And disenchantment, that means disappointment. It, I mean love, is as perennial as the grass. Now, perennial means that it grows back. So, supposing you cut some grass down and there's no more grass there, what's going to happen after the rain? It will grow back. But sometimes life is very dry and there's no water, there's no rain in, in life. That means love, friendliness, you know, good things. So sometimes when life is like that, and it's just very hard work, uh, we can start to believe that there's no love in the world. All right? So it says, don't, don't believe that. Because even if it seems like there's no love, there will be some. It will always grow back, come back, just like the grass grows back. Yeah? Take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune, but do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue, that's tiredness and loneliness. So this sentence means so I say, do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears just happen because you're tired and lonely. That's what makes them. They're not real. You're just tired. And that fear will come up. Oh no, nobody loves me. Yeah? I like that. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. All right, so that's the end of the, of the reading out for group three. So we're still exploring how to do that. You go ahead, you know, by the time this video gets into a group activity, you might have worked that out. <clears throat> group, <coughs> group four. That's Joanna Escobar, Lorraine Ferrers, Alexandria Lauren, Suzanne Lascuna, Dana Pamat, Shelley and Kindoy. Zilin Toledo and Ayla Wu. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here, Lorraine Ferris, <laughs> Princess Bahian. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God. What Ever you conceive him to be, so you can be at peace with the universe. You say, ah, the universe is wonderful, and that's being at peace with God. Or there may be another thing. So maybe you think there's an invisible, an invisible person, an invisible man, or an invisible woman, or an invisible mm, <laughs> something else. Um, be at peace about that. Yeah, if you if you think that there's no that there isn't the universe is just random, and and it doesn't have a way to unfold as it should, you can be very unpeaceful about that idea. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. And whatever your labors and and aspirations <clears throat> in the noisy confusion of life. Keep peace with your soul, with all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams. It is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. So sham and drudgery. A sham is a fake. 
It's like uh, you thought there was a building that was very beautiful, but you go up to it and it's just actually only only a face of a, of a, of a building. It, you go through the door and there's nothing there. It's just like um, on a movie set. <clears throat> and drudgery, drudgery is when something's extremely boring. That's drudgery. If work is just going on and on and on, you feel, ugh, when will it end? That's drudgery. And obviously broken dreams. And the end of reading out loud for group four. Dear students, I would like to ask you all to answer the points to ponder on page 10. So we've moved on a page. And then I would like some volunteers to share your answers. Not right now, but when you get to them. Firstly, <clears throat> what do you think is the message of the poem? Put your answers there. Two... How did you feel after reading of the poem? <clears throat> after reading the poem, sorry, shouldn't have of in there. Pick a stanza from the desiderata. The stanza is a block of two and a half lines, um, or two lines, one or two lines. Some of them are three, but more or less they're divided up. Yeah? Pick a stanza from the desiderata and share your feelings and thoughts about it. I just want to look at the definition of stanza before I say that, but I'm pretty sure you'd be okay. Um, yeah, it's just a group of lines. So but you can pick a group of lines. It doesn't have to be one line. It can be a few of them. And then answer and submit. So here is where to do that. You write the stanza and then write your thoughts and reflections and feelings as well. Eh? Yeah, feelings and thoughts. Not the same thing. Okay, moving on. So your output here, I would like some of you, some volunteers to share your answers. So currently you're just sending your answer directly to me so what I would like some volunteers to do is to put your answer into me and say, this is my volunteer to share with the class. Make it very clear, write it in maybe in bold in another color, that I am volunteering to share my answer. We'll try that way. And then what I'll do is I'll copy it into the group chat so that other people can see it too. There'll be a new experiment See if we can try to do that as a group. So I need your support and I need your effort in that. I don't want you all to be not volunteering. That wouldn't be good. There we go. <clears throat> if nobody volunteers in the whole world, it would be a very selfish world. Dear students, I'd like to volunteer some answers. <clears throat> so activity now, halfway down page 10. The summative test now. Identify the person or the concepts that is being described by the following items. So you're going to see those like this. So identify the person or concept being described and then write your answer on the space before the number and afterwards I would like some volunteers to share your answers. Here's <coughs> the thing to answer and submit. This refers to respect for or favourable opinion of oneself, as we covered earlier. Two, this refers to the physiological maturation and genetic makeup of a person which influences his or her developmental tasks. Three, this refers to the guiding principles in our life. And four, this refers to a person whom one knows and with whom one has a bond of mutual affection. Five, this refers to the educator who asserted, is a name of an educator that asserted that adolescents must fulfill certain developmental tasks to mature 
into early adulthood. Six, this refers to what? Oh no, it's a name of an educational person. You think that might be one of the other answers. <laughs> this refers to what Havighurst believed to be a way for adolescents to attain mature relations with peers. And seven, this refers to the position which a person occupied in a particular setting. <clears throat> Good. Eight, this, and now we're on to page 11. This refers to the set of norms, values, behaviors, and personality characteristics attached to a status. Remember the table we did? We had status and this other thing. Well, that other thing is the behavior and the personality characteristics. It goes together with that status. <clears throat> clear? You got that question clear enough? Let me explain it because it's got some big things in there. So if the status is you're a guard of a school, there's certain personality, so certain behaviors that go together with the guard, right? They salute or they say, good morning, sir, or mom, and they... They receive the, the, the people arriving, they check them out, their ID. So those are all behaviours of that status, the status of a guard. And the values, he must value honesty, yeah? he must value uh, hospitality, he must value a tidiness of a uniform. And the personality characteristics must also go in there, trustworthiness, things like that. And those those are all norms, right? They happen every day, not just sometime. Nine, <clears throat> this refers to a practical way of taking care of your changing body so that you can attain your full height and strength. So that's going to be about the bones, right? And the, so what do you need if you're going to have healthy bones? You need... Mm. Ten, this refers to the specific culture to which the individual belongs, which influences his or her developmental tasks. Can we go back and have a look through the text about that one? Okay. So... All right. Answer and submit those ones. And output volunteers to share your answers. So make we, we've talked about that, how to do that. So submit the work to me and put a, a note, I would like to volunteer my to share my answers. Clear? Now then, we've got an activity called positive notes. Positive notes are when you write something lovely on a piece of paper and you give it to someone. We are called to be bearers of hope and love to our fellow men. Think of three classmates who you think could use positive affirmation at the moment. Write them a small note and hand it over to them. three classmates who could use it the positive affirmation if someone's like super confident maybe they don't really need it but some people might be feeling shaky they might be going through difficulties so write them a small note and hand it over to them okay so some of the examples for positive notes are the following and there we have the ones that are on the page. Your kindness is so refreshing. I appreciate your considerate behavior. You are the kind who can do it. You are doing great. Beautiful. Lovely things to say, right? 
that kind of thing. It doesn't have to be exactly these ones. It can be that kind of thing. You know how to do that, right? So that's your activity. And I want to give you ev get evidence of it. So take pictures. So um, <clears throat> we have over the page some coming up. Let us extend our positive notes to our home and share them to our family members. Have you ever expressed your gratitude to your hard-working parents and to your very understanding siblings? Answer and submit. There's a question for you to answer. Have you ever said thank you for the kindness and generosity of your guardians? Perhaps it's about time. Write positive notes for them too. You have plenty of time now to write your own positive notes and to share them with your classmates. Okay, with the classmates. So, <clears throat> I'd like now volunteers to summarize the lesson. Again, volunteers means your summarize of the lesson should come to me on a PM and put I'm volunteering this summary and then I can screenshot that or I can share that screenshot over onto the GC which that's got you you've given me your permission to do that engagement so C now where are we we're on page 12 <clears throat> showing our appreciation so this is continuing a similar idea Dear students, I would like to ask you to do the activity on page 12, showing our appreciation. Then I would like some volunteers to share your thoughts about appreciating other people. Okay, we're going to do the activity first, and then I would like some volunteers to share your thoughts about this topic. So... <laughs> The slide has covered up some words. Do you mind? I'm just going to ping it off and then slide that down a little bit because it's covered up the, the words. In your own time spinning wheel. Here we go. Blah, 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 blah. Go, 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 go. Yeah, there you go. Community leaders. So let's go back again. Um, right. Teachers and school administrators the people like secretaries and the guard and the people in the offices, work so hard to provide us with quality education while our community leaders ensure that we live in a safe and happy community. Think of three ways in which you can express your gratitude. Three ways. Express your gratitude to teachers, school administrators and community leaders. This is your performance task there. And here we have those tags to write those in. So these are supposed to be like paper tags that you can write your appreciation in. You can send it to them. Why not? You can write it in and you could send that to your teacher. Thank you very much. I love you so much, Ma'am Zayed. Thank you very, very much for everything you do. I know you work really hard for us. You know, that kind of thing. Or you could send it to any other person that you know. You could address it on one of these boxes, uh, here and here and here, to those people, you know, like this principal or your head of sports or whatever it is, okay? Those people who are doing admin, administration, as, as it's known. That's those people, okay? So next... C, showing our appreciation. Okay, I'd like volunteers to share your thoughts about appreciating other people. You can know how to do that. So you can just send it as an audio as well. <clears throat> you can send that as an audio. You can just speak it into a PM and then make a note to me. I'm volunteering to share my thoughts about appreciating other people with the audio. Yeah, and that's giving me permission to share it over to the group chat. Let's try that. Please try and uh, join in with that 
and I'll, ha I'll be very happy if I see that work. Right, exercise D. So we're not far to go. We're on the, nearly on the last page. Okay, students, I would like to ask you to do the case study. Actually, they're, it's, it's confusing because they're using case study and situational analysis. It means the same thing. So they keep switching. Here we go then. I'd like to ask you to do the case study on pages 12 and pages 13 called situation 1 and situation 2. After I'd like volunteers to share your thoughts about appreciating other people. Situation 1. One of your classmates always brags about his family's big house new cars, branded clothes, and the latest gadgets. He is quite popular in class since he always spends money for his friends. One day you notice that your classmate is quiet and sad. You approach him and he confides to you that his father has been suddenly fired from his high-paying job. He is afraid that he will lose his friends and his popularity. How can you help your classmate discover that his self-worth is not tied to material possessions? Possible solution one. Possible solution two. You can hit pause here or best solution of those two, or, yeah. Can you think of fun activities that you can do with your friends which do not need money? To answer and submit. Pause. And now situation two, after which I would like some volunteers to share their answers. Situation 2. Your friend is very grade conscious. Hence, she always strives to get the highest possible grade in a subject. As a result, she is consistent, a cons consistent honour student. One day your friend calls you up and shares her concern about the quarterly test. She is afraid that she might get a low score because she has failed to prepare for it. She confides to you that her mother got sick the week before so she had to take care of her younger siblings and do the household chores. Thus she had very little time to study at home. How can you help your friend understand that her grades do not define her as a person. And now situation two, I think that's a wrong slide. Yeah, I'd just like you to, yeah, once you've done your answers here, I'd like some people to volunteer. That's okay, yeah. So here, about the grade conscious friend, the possible solution. One, two, and the best solution. If you received a low score in an important test because of a valid reason, how would you approach the situation? Answer and submit. And now I'd like some volunteers to share your answers. Go ahead. Let me see how that works.
situation analysis case study, I like to see a variety of answers, but I'd like to highlight the following. Case one, the classmate with the big house, the new cars, etc. Highlighting that our self-worth is innate, it's built in, it's, it's natural to us, and not dependent on material wealth, external things. Case two, busy friend, afraid of low scores. We should strive to have a balanced life and must set our priorities straight. That's a little bit unfair because she's saying that uh, it makes it look like the problem is this person doesn't have straight priorities. But in reality, her mother got sick. She has to take care of her younger siblings and do household chores. So that's not exactly not having straight priorities, is it? Because of all that, she had little time to study. That's not quite the same as someone who's got complete freedom of choice and chooses to go and do gaming all the time. So, But it is always true that we have to strive to have a balanced life. And you can also micro-task things. You can break a, a big task into lots of little tasks and sort of slot it in between. You don't leave it all as one time and then it doesn't get done. You can break it down and do a little bit of this task, a little bit of that task, a little bit of this task, a little bit of that task. Multitasking can be a way to get both things in the balance done. Okay, it's <laughs> my two cents. So, <laughs> um, scaffolding for the performance task. You know what scaffolding is, right? It's uh, where you're building a new building and they have those metal poles all joined up. The structure which will help the solid structure. So we're promoting self-worth through pictures. This is on page 13. Students, we will group into groups again. Not that easy. A bit easier in physical world than it is in virtual online. Uh, we will group into groups of three members. So I'm not going to go through the whole list, but basically we're going to get, you know, the whole class of 30, 32 of you um, are going to group up into groups of three and make a photo collage composed of five to ten pictures that will show your self-worth. Clear? That's your performance task. Going to be able to do that? Yes. You're going to be able to do it. Can you do it? Yes. When are you going to do it? Straight away, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so you're going to use Google Images and you can screenshot those images and you can drop them onto a, uh, a page that will accept photos and arrange them. And then you're going to share that with two other members. They're going to share yours all into one group. Again, you can make a messenger group. Figure that out. I'll also be figuring it out. And you can call the group something like, you know, grade seven values um, scaffolding group or promoting self-worth group. Yeah, got that? So name the group according to the activity, because afterwards, once we're done with it, we can uh, uh, close the group or something. It's just, and then you can share those, those pictures together and we can screenshot that and then mm, share it to the, uh, the group chat. So make a photo collage composed of five to 10 pictures. Could be, could be quite a few then. Eight pictures is good. Nine pictures is good. That will show your self-worth so you can also use your uh, you know pictures that you use on on facebook on your account if you've got photos of you put those in the put those in there yeah here we go think of a one sentence message about adolescence and positive self-worth and put it 
in the middle of your collage. So there's a little kind of graphic design thing for you to do that you think of one sentence message and it's going to be about adolescence and positive self-worth. So adolescence love being uh, being their self, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. I, don't, I can't think of one immediately off the top of my head. Think of one yourself. I'm an adolescent and I feel great about me or something. <laughs> yeah. And put it in the middle of your collage. Moving on. And then consider this. This is the following rubrics, uh, what you're going to be marked on in accomplishing this task. Have a look at this. So for three points, the collage has a high quality. It's very appealing and it's really skillfully done. You took time, you got the right. I think one of the things is to get the right kind of page to drop them on. So hopefully you've worked that out in other classes. Um, I can't suggest it for all of you exactly which one, but a good graphic design or an image making app so that it will accept photos and you can move them around and two points it's an acceptable quality it's appealing and yeah it's kind of somewhat skillful and for one point no it has a low quality it doesn't look very good it's not very appealing and not very skillfully done either and to do with the unity of those pictures and the message the selected pictures are highly cohesive it means that they they work well together and highlighting each other. And the selected pictures are consistent and support each other uh, for two points. For one point, the symbol and the message are unrelated. I just want to rewind something to highlight uh, a point. Ah, this is not correct. Um, you don't ignore this bit about the symbol. You don't have to do a symbol. Um, next one. Purpose. The output achieves the task's objectives successfully and convincingly. And for two points, the output achieves the task objectives kind of acceptably. And for one point, no, nah, doesn't really achieve the task's objectives. All right, so I'm going to now do, so pause there and do your task there. And I'm going to move on to the summary. Physical challenge becomes more pronounced when one reaches the age of adolescence. Two, adolescents develop the ability to remember more things and begin to practice critical and abstract thinking. Thirdly, adolescents usually have varied and interesting social groups. And next, human dignity means that regardless of age, race, financial status, educational attainment and religious affiliation, we are called to respect and value our fellow men. And lastly, self-worth means that we value ourselves as a person. That's our summary. We're going to round it off with a uh, quote by the Greek philosopher Heraclitus. The only thing that is constant is change. It's always going on, which is what the Buddha said. Righty-ho, we are good to go then. Very well done. Next thing we're going to do is the closing prayer. Are you ready? Reverently do we pray to thee, the holy and perfect one. We earnestly resolve to understand thy teaching and to daily tread thy path. So shall, like thee, we may attain the peace of Nirvana. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya. Very well done, Grade 7. I'm proud of you. I'm very looking forward to working together more. May you have a great day. May you have blessings. And may you be free from avoidable suffering. Let's take a... Oops, <laughs> no, we don't want to do that.